So it is fake. Uh, no, it's real. That's a real <laughs> is it really? Yeah. <laughs> it's not something that's going to bite me, right? Mm. It's squishy. It feels it's warm. <laughs> okay. Is it soil? Mud? Twix? Oreos? Brownies? Samoa? Hershey's? Toll House chocolate? Is it old Valentine's Day chocolate? Is it a s'mores? Was it a Rice Krispie or like an Oreo or Chips Ahoy? It smells like brownies. Is it chocolate? It's not alive, is it? I guess you can't answer that question. Oh. <laughs> oh my. Why is it gooey? Is it a cookie cake? Can I eat it? No. Oh. <sighs> two for two. Here we go. Whoa! What was that? Is it gonna bite me? <laughs> is it a cat? Dog? <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> I can't! I can't even! What am I judging? <laughs> Is it live? Oh, I don't want to touch it. <laughs> I'm scared! Dude, is that like a... Is it an animal? Is that cotton candy? Did it just move? Is it a stuffed animal or is this a living thing? Oh my gosh! <laughs> is it a rabbit? Do I have to put my hand in there? Ew. Mmm. This is great right here. Mmm. Ew. Ew, <laughs> it's warm. Ew. Ew. Oh, gross. <laughs> this is for sure living. I'm just gonna guess it's a frog. Nice and warm. Yep. This is what I would imagine putting your hands in throat feels like. It's not oatmeal. Uh, it's not oatmeal. She just told me it's not oatmeal. It's mud. It's too consistent to be mud. Is it baby food? It's kind of like oatmeal, but it's not. <laughs> it's uh, grits. Is it grits? I don't want to smell this one. Okay, I'm going to smell it. Oatmeal. Is it applesauce? Is it cookie dough? Grits. Corn, canned corn, spaghettios, no. Oh, bread pudding, uh, porridge, oatmeal. Oh, it's so warm. Is it oatmeal? Nope. What is that? Feel free to go whenever. No. I something just clawed that desk. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Just look at me. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! <gasps> I feel like something's going to bite me. Golly, why is that moving? <laughs> I'm scared. Is it going to bite me? Is there any chance it's going to bite me? If so, say yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> is it alive? Oh. Is it a little dog? It kind of has a stubby tail. So it's a cat with no tail? I'm scared. I don't want to touch it. Can I just guess? Is it an animal? <laughs> it's going to bite me. Oh my gosh, is it a dog? Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm sorry that I almost hit you. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it's a nice dog. Oh. Hey, it's so cute. Hey, buddy. What's up, guys? It's good to be back. Last weekend in 1 Peter 2, Ryan left us with a question of how does your life represent Christ? And this week, I've got one big thing for you. And that is that the gospel changes how we live and how we relate to others. And to illustrate his point, Peter is going to begin chapter 3 talking about what may feel like a little bit of a left turn with husbands and wives, which, hey, 
don't tune me out. In fact, turn me up. Tur turn that volume up. And here's what I'll... It's probably a little too loud. Well, just turn me back down a little bit. Here's the reality. These truths that we can find in this passage apply to you. Even though I know that you're not married, right? Nobody's married in Wake. Oh, Jacob, they're like 14 years old. That's right. But here's the reality. First, to the girls. He says, do not let your adorning be external. The braiding of the hair and of the putting on of gold jewelry or the clothes that you wear. But let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. Take a moment, and I want you to think about the top three or four people that you love to spend the most time with. Think about what makes them who they are and why you want to be around them. My guess is that it has more to do with what's on the inside than what's on the outside. Take this note down. Let your beauty be found internally, knowing that you are a child of God. You've been loved by Him, sought after by Him, chosen by Him. So look, you don't need to be Instagram famous in order to be loved and liked and feel valuable and important. Besides, the people that you love spending time around aren't the ones that care so much about how they look and what they're wearing and all consume themselves. They're people that are kind, that are others focused and others centered, willing and ready to serve those around them. Be those kind of people because that's what the gospel does in our life. And to the guys, listen to verse seven. Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you in the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. And guys, I know that Peter is talking about how husbands treat their wives, but here's what's true for all of time, is that real godly men honor and respect women because they are God's daughters, our sisters in Christ. And so we honor them, respect them, value them, encourage them, build them up. We don't tear them down, but to take some of Jesus' words, we love them as we love ourselves. And so the question becomes, how do we do this? And it's the one big thing. It's the gospel. And Peter reminds us of the gospel in verse 18. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. Guys, that is the gospel that Christ, the perfect, sinless Son of God, would come and suffer on our behalf, the righteous for the unrighteous, us, weary sinners, so that He might bring us to God, that we would be set free from sin and death, and that we could have life, eternal life with Him. That even while we are still sinners, Paul would say in Romans, that Christ died for us. And so how do we live in light of that? We seek to bless others, even when they do us wrong. We seek to honor all men. We seek to live honorable lives, holy lives, in response to what Jesus has done for us. Not to earn his favor, but because of what he's done for us, we live holy lives. That is the one big thing, is the gospel that Jesus came to save you. And so here's my question for you, is how is the gospel changing your life and the way that you are living and the way that you are relating to those around you?